Hi, it's uh, Sunday, November 19th. I got back from Nashville and I'm running over here in New Jersey after going shopping for a 16 pound turkey that we'll be eating on Thursday with family and friends. Three more days of school before that. And I have some reflections here on uh, the National Writing Project's meetings in Nashville, Tennessee over the past few days. You know, I think it's a little hard for me to have this conversation. Maybe that's why I'm doing it here on this video first. Um, but I was not happy with much of the technology I saw um, in the writing project. And uh, lots of voices are flying through my head as I say that. One of them is Betty's, who said at a meeting yesterday, everybody seems to be happy with what they're doing. And that's my problem. <laughs> Uh, I didn't see a lot of critical thinking going on. I know it's, it's a real struggle out there, and I know just doing anything with technology is a big deal. But uh, I'm not satisfied with what I'm seeing, um, and I need to I need to say that in a way that uh, is not critical. It's not put down. Yeah, far be it for me to uh, be critical of anybody. Um, and, yeah, to some degree, I miss the, uh, the critical reflection of my own work. You know, uh, if everything is okay, then nothing is okay, too. And uh, there's just not enough accountability going on at these meetings. And I mean that in a positive way. Not enough credit given to people who are who are really um, exploring the possibilities of of this new media instead of kind of just packaging stuff in it. So uh, another reference point. This morning I was thumbing through my educational bloggers posts and I came upon Clarence Fisher's uh, post about just a quick reflection really on NCTE and his complaints, his thoughts there uh, echoed my thoughts which hadn't been expressed yet so it gave me courage to try to say them here too. Uh, he said is that yeah, he was inspired by a couple of sessions, but he was disappointed by many others. Such as a session where they were using rap to teach uh, grammar. Um, appropriating the students' uh, media and language. And uh, he also complained about blogs where teachers said these are locked down behind a wall, you can't get to them. And, uh, and I agree, those aren't blogs, if that's what's happening. And uh, um, you know, I, uh, I, I quickly rush in to think, uh, what about the personal learning space? That's locked out. You know, what's amazing about an elg is that uh, it's not locked down for my kids. You know, my kids' stuff is out there because they can make it public. Whereas Lee, who isn't ready to make stuff public, uh, you have to be logged in to see it. So, an ELG is a really nice tool for, uh, for letting teachers collaborate and uh, have different standards, expectations, and, and be able to do both things. Um, 
Uh, that was a distraction. <laughs> but uh, back to Clarence's comments. He also said that he saw blogs where teachers were posing questions and students were answering those questions. Yeah, I, wow. It's, it, it, it always surprises me uh, to see that that's how teachers imagine using blogs. And, uh, and I hope on youthvoices.net we've already established a, uh, a vibe, a uh, community feel there that, uh, that encourages students to publish uh, what's on their minds. Which is sometimes uh, what they're doing in class, because that can be on a kid's mind, but uh, not always. So you know, I'm, I feel an urge to just emphasize the things that I liked, um, the, the things that I think are in the right direction, and, and to remind myself that not everybody can be where you want them to be, where you think they ought to be. And who am I to say where they ought to be? All of that, I know, but... I, if I don't say it, there'll be no conversation about it. <laughs> There's got to be some conversation about this. It's, it's, um... You know... I don't know how to say it. If things are not published on the web... Uh, that's, that's our starting point. That's where we've got to start with things. Um, and we can't be imagining that we're giving students voice unless we're encouraging them and showing them how to do that. And uh, I saw little of that, very little of that. And too much of what is called technology work is um, PowerPoint, inspiration, even iMovie, digital stories. I, yeah, yeah, I, I don't want to hear any of that stuff anymore. I'm tired of it. It's not, it's not moving to me. Um, and it's not about writing. Uh, I can't, I can't say that. I know. Uh, I don't know what to say. That's a uh, part of me saying that at least. Can I somewhat say that? You know, what's a digital story? It's a commercial. It's an infomercial. Yeah, that's the closest example I can find for uh, where that exists in the real world. I'm sorry. That's not good enough. That's not going to give our kids voice. And... Just because it's easy to do, and it includes multimedia, doesn't mean that it's what we should be doing. So I'd love to shut down all of that stuff and have people start again, man. Where were the wikis? Where were the uh, blogs? I didn't see any, except what I knew about already with Chris Sloan and my work and um, the elementary school stuff that uh, you know, the uh, youth radio people were doing. Um, I wonder though, am I stuck? You know, maybe I am. Maybe I'm stuck in web blogs and wikis and collaborative writing that you can do in Google Docs. And uh, podcasting, um, RSS feeds. But you know what? I, yeah, that's where I think it's at. And uh, and I wonder why why it's not happening there. Um, you know, I. Um, I think it's time to bring back a workshop that I did, I say four, maybe it was five years ago, um, based on Douglas Bieber's work in uh, um, 
uh, what's it called, you know, uh, linguistics that uh, looks at everything. Um, he, corpus linguistics, where they take, they try to describe the language of letters as compared to the language of uh, formal essays, as compared to the language of uh, narrative, for example. And to describe these genres, and genre there really does take in um, audience and purpose and uh, form. But uh, describe these genres by the kind of language that gets afforded in them. And I've made this argument so often that I think we're ready to hear it. Um, that's how we need to pick our technologies, too. When I hear a teacher say, I don't care what technology they use, just so they accomplish their purpose, I wonder, what's your purpose? You know, what, what purpose are you trying to accomplish? And why are you not being critical about your technologies? Uh, you know, what kind of, what kind of planning is that? So are we asking, are we asking? What kind of language is being um, afforded in digital stories? Uh, you know, it's a poetic snapshot, uh, quick blurbs. It's sort of like, you know, the, the titles uh, that went along with silent movies. That's the kind of language we're getting. Um, Over-emotional, romantic. When I did that workshop, I had students working in a uh, tapped-in, sort of moo-like situation. Um, so we compared the language of that kind of chat with the language of a website, with the language of a discussion board, with the language of a blog. And you know what? I think the language is different in each of those cases. Add a wiki in and you've got another kind of language. And all of those are different than would be on paper. So what kind of, or, or in just discussion. Um, you know, uh, the, the sort of normal media of, of the classroom. So, yeah, that's why we want technology. We want technology because we want kids to be able to exercise their voices with this kind of language. Not this, not any kind of media. I, 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 I don't know how to get back to this. <coughs> Obviously, pretty strong felt. And I gotta work this through a little bit more. First though, I, I need to think about my forum. Like, where can I have this conversation? I want to invite some people on to Teachers Teaching Teachers to talk about this. Talk about what did you see that upset you at, uh, at the writing project annual meeting. And, uh, yeah, why not? Let's have it out. And uh, what did you see that excited you? We can talk about that too. Uh, I saw Bud Hunt there and, uh, you know, what I saw that he was going, planning to do, I haven't seen them do it yet, but what they're planning to do around teacher research and, uh, and podcasting and weblogs, really. It's pretty exciting. Um, and I was stimulated by that session to think about how going public is what teacher weblogs are about, and it's also what teacher inquiry and teacher research is about. So, um, so yeah, that, that was the session where I did the most thinking, the most challenging thought that happened for me was at that session. But how do we... Look, you know, I... I, I wow, well, I must be crazy. You know, I, I get lots of respect in this community. Why would I put something out like this where I seem to be critical of what other people are doing? I don't, I'm not curmudgeonly that way, or... I care about this community, and I, I just want to see it challenge itself. Challenge me! Question my work. Um, and let me question yours. Let's not 
come together once a year and have a love fest. And, uh, and then in the hallways, talk about how we're teaching, uh, you know, how to use the Microsoft Suite. And how frustrated you are with your website presence and, and uh, you know, what program you should use to, to change that. You know, I, I don't know how to say this. I, so that's my message right now. There's something grinding in me about this last couple of days. And uh need to figure out a way to to say it constructively. And this is my first draft toward that. And uh, my name is Paul Allison. You can reach me at Allison, A-L-L-I-S-O-N, P-R, at gmail.com. And please pick us up again on teachersteachingteachers.org. And uh, that's every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern at World Bridges or at uh, Teachers... Uh, what is it? At, uh, edtechtalk.com. See you soon.